Okay, I don't know if I could be heard clearly or not, but okay, we'll try this again. There's a lot of noise in the back. <sighs> um, Alright, so this is an update now on um, my trip and also what's going on. Um, okay, so I went to Michigan on the 9th. Uh, I flew there. The ride was great. Very uh, calm and uh, not too much turbulence or anything like that. It was a good day to travel and fly, I guess. Um, so I got there. Once I got there, I um, rented a car. I went to the hotel that I had booked, which turned out to be quite decent. You know, I, I wasn't, again, I don't know that area. I just, you know, appeared there, did a little research. So I don't end up in like the hood or something. Um, so. So I got there, I got into the hotel, checked in everything. Uh, the kids knew that I was coming. Um, they alerted the father, of course. The father brought him there, even though I was, should have just rolled up to the house and picked them up that way. Um, and uh, again, I'm too lenient on the father of the kids sometimes. That, you know, it's to my detriment, but it, it's all right. He, he ended up bringing them. And the whole time from there on, once he dropped them off, he was following me with his car. I had my own car and he had his car. He's following me. <laughs> He's following me everywhere with the kids because, you know, I took them out to eat. Um, you know, went to the store, bought some clothes, whatever, whatever. Um, I was learning the roads there because the roads are different than here and um you know just hanging out uh but of course in the rearview mirror there was the father behind us or he didn't even have to be directly behind us to follow us he was like uh let's say we stopped at a supermarket right his car was there parked at the supermarket and uh surprise surprise like it's really creepy. <laughs> it's so, so creepy the way that he is. Um, so, you know, and also I think my, my daughter has a tracker on her phone. I mean, this is, this is what he does, right? She has a tracker on the phone. So he knew everywhere that we was going, basically. It made it very difficult, very difficult to spend time with my kids. Not only that, he kept making appointments or saying that they have appointments all the days that I'm there. I'm not even there long. You know, I was there two days and oh, we have to go tomorrow to, to, uh, to this appointment. Oh, and then the next, the next days, oh, I have to go to the dentist and blah, blah, blah. Even though the whole time they were there, they never seen a dentist or a doctor. The whole time and it's been like nine months or so really you're gonna schedule it just on the day that i'm going there that i have limited time really seriously <sighs> very frustrating most likely what he did he's just paid cash for the appointment you know walked in kind of thing walking kind of thing just to interrupt the time that i have with my kids it's hard to argue with my daughter because she doesn't understand the manipulation and the tactics that he tries to pull because I know him so long and I know how, what he does and he's done some horrific things okay so so yeah it was it was hard it was hard it was good that I rented the car and all that because otherwise I wouldn't have seen them I would have seen them only when he says like you know one hour or two hours and then they would have left and then left me behind uh, in the hotel and I wouldn't have any access to go anywhere else if I didn't rent the car you know oh, yeah, yeah. man I can't stand this man I hate playing games I don't like games I don't like um, you know living like that where you gotta anticipate someone's move and then 
be 10 steps ahead of them. That's like a game I'm not into. I didn't, I didn't think that was what I signed up for when I was born, but uh, I, I don't think so because other people don't live like that. Um, it causes too much anxiety and stress and uh, emotions and I can't deal with that lifestyle. <laughs> of chess, playing chess. I really need to learn the actual game of chess and see what the hell is going on here. I'm missing out on Um. So yeah, that was nice. Um, the day of, the day of my uh, of air, um, what do you call? My flight, the day of my flight, was supposed to be the 11th so somehow he figured out that I was there for two days because I think I told my daughter see this is why it hurts bad because I can't even tell my daughter truthful things because she just goes ahead and tells the father and he uses that information to his advantage and so since he knew that I was staying only two days on the 11th he shows up there in the morning he was staying he was waiting outside of the hotel from who knows what time he started waiting. I don't know. But he knows how the hotel works and how what time checkout is. So, yeah. So, what did he do? Of course, he tried to prevent me from leaving. And I already was set at that point. I had the tickets ready. I had three tickets. One for me, my daughter, and my son. My daughter just like always on the phone. Um, giving every little information, detail about me and what I'm doing. And asking me, why are you going here? Why are you doing that? Why are we going there? It was just, it was really unbearable. But, um, I don't know. I'm very proud of myself right now. I don't know how I did it. But I learned how to play these stupid games. I don't like playing these stupid games, man. But if you want to play, I'm going to play back. I'm not going to be the loser anymore, like, like, you know, and so the original plan was to take them all three on the plane. Thank God I got a, not a discount, I got a credit for the airlines, um, United Airlines, but then I had booked two separately through the airlines and one through Priceline, you know, third party, that's a little tricky to get your money back. And so I lost the ticket. So I lost money there. It wasn't too much. It was under two hundred dollars. But you know, it's a small price to pay. I also had to extend my car rental, which cost me another hundred dollars. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I knew I was determined to get what I was going there for done, and I wasn't leaving until I did it. So. Um, really ridiculous and I, so I was talking to my son a little bit while we were together and he was like oh dad told me that wait let me make sure this is on you never know I could be talking to myself um, so let me make sure oh she he was like dad told me that if I go with you on vacation um, he's gonna get kicked out of the house and Deja's gonna get kicked out of the house. He's telling my son this, giving him guilt and stuff to think about. The thing, the shit, the lengths that he would go to, and obviously he didn't get kicked out or whatever. He's a liar. Who knows what the hell's true? He takes a little bit of truth and makes a whole lie out of it. So... The, the part that's true is probably that she didn't want uh, anybody going anywhere with me. For, for some reason, like, they painted the picture of me being some evil person. You know what I'm saying? It's really horrific. Anyway, so... <clears throat> so what ended up happening when he tried to prevent me from leaving on the 11th... Uh, he wasted my gas in the rental to drive around following him to some park or whatever. Oh, let's go to the park. We'll talk about this, blah, 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 whatever. Um, yeah, that was a waste of time. Also a waste of my gas money. So, 
I got him to to pay the to fill my gas tank up because hey, excuse me, you made me waste all this gas, plus I had to return the rental with full gas, we know. So I got him to pay that at least. You know, you can get those them you can't get these people to do things sometimes. You gotta know how to play them. So So okay, I got my my tank full. And also, uh, you know, I missed my flight because of all this nonsense and him preventing me and trying to take the kids away from him. But I did not let him. The only thing I let him do was take one out of them. One. Well, mostly it was, you know, I took one kid and then he took the other so no one leaves without him. I don't know. That was risky because I could have just left with the one and left the other one behind. Anyway. So... So he ended up paying for the for the hotel. Oh, I'm going to pay for your hotel here. Here, I'm going to pay two days for your hotel. So then he could know when I'm going to leave again. So he knew I was going to leave again on the 13th. Or at least leave that hotel. So what I had to do was play it tricky because he was going to sit out there in the morning again waiting for me to check out. And I, uh, I didn't come for all this bullshit, you know. Um... So since I knew that, I planned ahead and I told my daughter, hey, I got to go to the rental thing tomorrow uh, because I got to extend my rental, obviously, because, you know, I didn't get to leave on the 11th. It makes sense and it's the truth. But the, uh, obviously I wasn't going to get any more days extended. I was just going to drop the car rental off and then go to the airport with the shuttle that they give you free shuttle. So that was what I really was going to do, but I was going to tell her that. So, I don't care if anyone thinks I'm wrong for doing it. I had to do what I had to do. I tried getting her on the 11th, and I couldn't. And I knew I was not going to get any of them if I continued, you know, trusting that it'll just work as planned. Because it wasn't going to happen. She was going to tell him every little detail on what my next move was. All right, so I had to make them believe that I was staying longer time long distance like you know two weeks maybe more something like that i just had to make them both think that and then uh she didn't want to come with me in the morning anyways she was like oh i don't want to go see i told her i have to get up real early so you know do you want to come or what do you want to do and she's like oh no no i don't want to do it I'll, I'll, I'll just stay here i'll stay here and you go and get that done i'm not getting up that early something like that so it worked in my favor and um so I ended up telling my son the day before, hey, I got to get up early tomorrow, wake up early, okay, because we really got to go, I got a few things to do, and I'll get you some stuff, I didn't really bribe him much, I just said, hey, if you want to get something extra, we go and get it, whatever you got to do, but I got to get up early, so I already warned him the night before, again, remember, my son is anticipating to go with me, my daughter is not, so... It was a little easier that way. And so, so on the 13th, the 13 rolls along the checkout. I tried to extend the checkout a little more because I knew I was going to leave her behind in the hotel. I mean, before you say something, she's 15 years old. Um, so it worked as planned, thank God. Oh my God, everything worked perfectly not flawlessly because there was some issues in between that I had to you know get on right away before he knew about it so uh I've done this so many times I have had to I've had to escape many times from places I've had to get rid of people I am really skilled at this so um this is to prevent me from being victimized over and over. That's why I do this. It's not negative. It's not negative about it. So you have to do what you got to do to survive sometimes. Some people. Certain kind of people like me. All right. So we have to think like the abusers. We have to study them. We have to be 10 steps ahead instead of them being 10 steps ahead of you. All right. So... And, but this thing is, it never ends. It's like he gets his hit, I get my hit. It's like a game. And I'm tired of it. I really am. I don't want to live life like this. 
I like being happy. I like being carefree and free willed, whatever, free spirit, or what you call me. Uh, I get excited about little things. I don't need to follow some strict conservative way of life. So I don't go through all that stress. That's a nonsense. Like, who, who said we have to do things a certain way? I don't know. But anyway, so. Look at these people dancing over there. Can I get them on film? No, nope, they're gonna see me. <laughs> anyway, so. Look, they're dancing. That's nice. I like seeing people dance. I love dancing myself. Anyway, so yeah. So this is what you do with narcissists. Hey, you don't just do this with anybody. You gotta do these with abusers, a narcissists, a psychopath. You have to know how to play their game. You gotta study them. And then so you can, the only way you're gonna beat them is if you study them and beat them at their own game. That's it, that's the only way. You can't be who you really are, which is a caring person, trusting all that nonsense. No, they're just gonna step right over you. So, I'm tired of that. And I'm no longer a victim, so, so, anyway, so, I, I well, got up in the morning, early, before, um, the, uh, hotel, um, checkout time, I got up early, and got my son up, and we were on our way. I left my daughter there sleeping, and it, the doors were locked. I only, I'm the only one with the key. <laughs> it's all down. So, I already learned from the days before how they, the hotel operates and all that. So they come around 11 o'clock to see if you're gonna check out that day or you need a little time maybe to get your stuff ready to go. But they don't extend the checkout time by much. It was only like a half hour. So I got that, at least I got to check out for 11.30 to buy some time. And um, so my daughter slept. She actually slept in quite a while. Thank God. I was, I was, I was, you know, hoping that she wouldn't get up early and stay up early. Because then she started questioning things and find, trying to call me, see where I am. All that, even though I told her the day before I was going to the car rental to extend the rental. And I'll be back. And she didn't. She offered not to go, so she was already prepared and knew where I was. And so I called her around 11. She wasn't answering. Answering. I called a little bit while later, 10, 20 minutes. She finally answered. She was still in bed. Great. Uh, buying me more time. Um, so <laughs> this shit is crazy, man. Um, So she was kind of like groggy and she just got up and said, hey, Daisy, you got to get ready because the guess what? The um, the hotel's not allowing a late checkout, which they are, weren't because they're assholes and I don't like them. I didn't like that area of the people. So whatever, they were being a dick to me, right? And they could extend it to 12 or 1 o'clock because they did the other two days I was there, okay? Anyway, so the checkout was 11.30 at the latest i asked her hey did anyone knock did anyone call the room to get you know to have you leave no 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 okay fine so get ready um by 11 30 you gotta be at a hotel unfortunately i'm still on the road and trying to figure out the car rental thing with nico and everything's fine and uh just just make sure you leave the room at 11 30 your father will be right there because he was there all morning so <laughs> so you know, there was no risk involved there. I, I am not, I don't just do stupid things. Like, I think about it first. Um, so the father wants to claim I abandoned her or some, some stupid thing. He knew she didn't want to come with me anyway. And so, so he ended up picking her up right on clock work, right on time. I mean, she got, just got out of the hotel, closed the door. You don't even got to go to the front desk. You just get out of the hotel, that's it. Walk out the door, and her father was there to pick her up. So there's no way I abandoned my child. Bullshit. And she's not a child, she's a teenager. I taught her well. Anyway, so I don't feel bad about that. I had to do it. The only way I had to do it because she refused to come with me the first time around. And I knew I had to do it that way. But I did buy a ticket and everything. So it was on hold. Um, so... I ended up going to the airport. Um, 
the airport. I got there so early that they didn't want to check me in until 12.30 or some shit. So I was kind of stressed out by that because I had an hour window to play with. Because at 11.30 is when the father picked her up. And, the, you know, they had to get out of the hotel room at that time. And within that time, he was so, start suspecting me or something to try to r drive down to the airport, which was about 45 minutes away uh, to Detroit. So it was kind of far. Um, but I already been way ahead of, because I left early. I've been there since early. And, and, and they wouldn't check me in until 1230. And then finally I got in at 1230, run through the security line, because the security line was very short, because not many people traveling anyways around this time. So... I got in and out real quick. Once I went behind the the gates there of the security check, I was good. Like, you know, there's no way he could have gotten me then. And that's what I was worried about. But I was able to get behind there by 1230 and my flight was 320. So I had all that time to wait in the back there. But they had food and stuff to do. So it wasn't that bad. My son didn't get bored. Like, he would have got bored quick, but he didn't really get bored. So... By then, you know, they were like, hey, where are you? Where are so I had to lie and say, oh, I'm at Walmart. I just got the car. It's a different car. I told them to make a model of the car. That would be common to a rental car place for that amount of money. So I just, yeah, I know how to lie and all that. So, you know, to keep them questioning and wondering where I am and going different places to uh, keep them off my scent of where I really was, which was I was in the airport. Cause I, I just drove the car to the airport uh, rental car place which is right there dropped it off and then got the shuttle to the airport all right so in that time period that he could have if he caught on quick enough he could have picked up my daughter and drove down to the Detroit uh, airport and he would have probably made it there because like I said I had to wait till 12 30 to check in and then you know I was there early, so I couldn't get in. I was trying to get in there before 12.30, but they wouldn't allow it. So uh, it, it kind of scared me because of that one-hour window he had to play with. If he knew where I was, he could have rushed over there. And that's like 30 minutes the way he drives. He could have made it before the 12.30 time for me to check in and go through the security. He would, I would have been so screwed at that point because all that is open to anybody. You could... Where I was waiting to get my security check, that's all open to the public. So he could have ran right in there. It was a very empty air, airport. And he would have found us right away. And so thank God, or whatever is up there. Actually, I think myself, because of my cleverness. Uh, <laughs> of how I got, went about that. Um, and uh, everything worked as planned. Once I got behind the gates there and the security point, that's when I started, you know, letting up on the lying and trying to... My my daughter already knew that where I was. She's like, you know, I know you left with Nico, right? So stop making us go all around the place when you're not here. And I was like, well, you know, I couldn't tell you. I didn't even talk... Actually, I didn't even respond to her until I got into New Jersey because I wanted to make sure he don't call Amber Alert on me or something. Which he can't. And he also tried to threatened me with that before and I'm like well okay do whatever you gotta do but I know the law and we don't have any custody arrangement anyway so I could have taken them any legally it's not illegal so he's depending on me being ignorant I'm not ignorant anymore so so that didn't scare me when he threatened the amber alert thing I was like um okay whatever I just ignore it um so, wow, I'm just shocked over the whole thing. I already discussed with my daughter, hey, you know what? I came here for a reason. I want you to come with me. It's only fair. I haven't seen you for months. You to spend time with me for at least the summer. You can always go back. I'm not making you stay with me forever or permanently. I'm not doing that, and I wouldn't do that. And I gave her choices. She's refused. She just wants to be there. I, I'm not forcing my kids to do nothing. That's not right. That's, she's 15 years old. She's not a little baby. You know? And my son wanted to come. I didn't do nothing wrong. He's been trying to prevent me from talking to them for months. Blocking me. Blocking my emails. 
having when I actually get to speak with them, he'll tell them, "Hey, you gotta go now. Time for bed." Or, "Hey, we gotta go to this place and uh oh, clean your room. You can't talk on the phone until you clean your room." All kinds of stupid games like that. So I can't speak with my kids directly with pri in private or nothing. And I didn't say nothing about her, their father or that woman, because I don't care. Like I, I was trying to talk to them, to to to, to maintain a relationship with them that was my goal so we try to get away of that it's really it's really frustrating and exhausting so um i made it to newark when well, no, i don't tell where i am i made it to newark from michigan on the plane my son i prepared him for the plane ride because he didn't remember being in a plane before he was a little anxious but he wasn't scared he was actually excited to go and i told him what to expect and how the plane moves and uh he was fine he was great i'm the one that's scared in planes <laughs> i really am so i was just kind of like gri gripping the hand the arms of the plane and just kind of being quiet to myself and looking down because i don't i don't like it i get anxiety attacks panic attacks and crap when I'm on planes anyway so it was a short ride it was only an hour good weather it was a little bit turbulent at the end when he was landing into Newark Newark's a hard airport to get into and also New York I guess because of all the buildings and you know how many people there are uh, so many buildings landmarks and roads that it's just like and a lot of air traffic so it was kind of a uh, turbulent, a bit more turbulence than I would like, that I'm used to, but but we made it safe, thank God. Uh, I say thank God, but I'm really thanking uh, the pilot, <laughs> you know. Anyway, and it was creepy because we had to wear masks in the plane. It's kind of hard to breathe, you know. Good that the air vents, there's like little air vents that you put on top of the... Um, Thing for the airplane um I don't know if I know him, her <laughs> um so the air comes down and it was good it was okay because it goes through the mask and you could breathe so you don't have to remove it per se so it, it was okay nobody coughing or sneezing I didn't notice any of that it was kind of roomy it wasn't you know it's something I didn't want to do but I had to do it I only have this time the, you know, time during summer, you know, when school starts, then all these restrictions are, are, are really going to prevent me from seeing them. And so it had to be done. And plus this COVID thing, and now who knows if, kind of fear what the hell is going to happen in the future. Who knows if I see them again. So, whatever. Anyone have an opinion that's uh, negative, go ahead. You can leave it. I could read it. If I delete it, I delete it. Because... No one's going to bring me down from where I was. I was completely defeated by these people. All right? Anyway, okay. So, I don't know. This game goes on. It's just the game's not over in his eyes. So, I got to keep thinking of more strategies to move along in life. It's really horrible. And you don't want to be a person that gets... Uh, and entangled and involved with a narcissist that has the actual disorder not that they have narcissism everyone has that if they have the real disorder you'll know it and you'll see how your life's been destroyed from day one with the person okay so this is just me telling it like it is and maybe give hope to some people that have been been kicked down by these people and unfairly treated and hopefully they get some kind of strength that they could rise above these evil people and uh, just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep thinking, keep learning, keep uh, doing research. You have to know the enemy. You have to know the enemy in order to defeat the enemy. You can't just... Uh, be the way you normally are. You have to play a little dirty. And, uh... When it's needed. When it's needed, obviously. If there's a big reason. 
Otherwise, just walk away from them, you know, and repair your life. But, um, I have kids with the, this demon, and, uh, this is my fate, unfortunately. Don't let it be you, man. Because when you have kids, uh, you're not going to be able to walk away. <laughs> you're not. You could, but that's not advisable, obviously. So, you have to be smarter and get tougher and all that. So, that's all I had to say today. <sighs> It's a beautiful day. It's still beautiful. It's summer. So, hope everyone's well and keeping safe. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And leave a comment, please. Hopefully, it's a nice comment. But if it's not, it's, it is what it is. I'll read it. Okay? So, I'll uh, talk to you guys later. And have a great day. Bye-bye.